On the evening of February 6, 2021, a lonely van was driving on a dimly lit road when suddenly, the girl sitting in the passenger seat grabbed the bottom of the van's window and jumped out. Welcome to Red Eastern True Crime. If you enjoyed this story, please subscribe to my channel. Let's dive into this story. At 3 p.m. on February 6, 2021, Zhou Yang Chun, a van driver from Changsha City, Hunan Province, received an order on the Holala app. The order was to transport items from a residential area in Yuelu District to another apartment at 8.30 p.m., covering a distance of 11 kilometers. The customer had already paid a fee of 39 RMB, and the Huolala platform also provided an additional subsidy of 12 RMB for a total of 51 RMB, about 8 US dollars. Zhou Yang Chun, born in 1983 in Hunan Province, has been married to his wife for over 10 years, and they have two children. The couple moved to Changsha City and used their savings to buy a 90-square-meter apartment, for which they have to make monthly mortgage payments. In September 2020, Zhou bought a van, for which he had to pay a monthly loan of 3,000 RMB, about $440. He registered as a driver on the Hulala platform and earns about 10,000 RMB per month about $1,400. He also earns a few hundred dollars by transporting goods for a store. Huolala is a platform for transporting goods, moving and running errands. To become a driver on Huolala, you need to own a van or a truck. Customers can place orders on this app, select vans or trucks of different sizes, enter the pickup and drop off locations, and the platform will display the delivery fee then they can choose the time and specify the number of passengers. If there are any passengers, and if so, one or a maximum of two. Payment is made in advance and the delivery fee is fixed. The customer for the order was a 23-year-old girl named Che Shasha. We'll call her Sasa, born in 1997. She graduated from college a little over a year ago and was working at her uncle's company. Sasa has been in a relationship with her boyfriend for five years. She is independent and has a clear plan for her life, hoping to buy a house and get married in Changsha soon. On February 6, 2021, at 3 p.m., Sasa placed an order on the Hulala platform. This is the third time she has used Hulala for moving. The previous two times, her boyfriend and uncle helped her, but this time she felt that she only had a few things to move so she did it herself. At 8.38 p.m., Joe arrived at the pickup location. When Sasa saw him, she started to move her things from the mezzanine of the first floor of the building. Joe waited in the van, occasionally organizing Sasa's luggage in the back. Since the wait was long, Joe suggested that Sasa could pay a little to help with the move, which would make it go faster. But Sasa insisted on doing it herself. During this time, Joe asked Sasa three times how much longer it would take, and Sasa just said it would be quick. Joe told her that if it took more than 40 minutes, there would be a waiting fee of 5 RMB every 10 minutes, about $0.7. In the end, Sasa made a total of 15 trips to move all her clothes, luggage, and her dog. It took 36 minutes in total. Sasa got into the passenger seat and said, I'm so tired. She didn't fasten her seatbelt and Joe didn't remind her to do so. At 9.14 p.m., the van finally left and Joe was quite upset after waiting so long. He asked Sasa why she hadn't moved her things earlier and Sasa replied that she didn't get off work until 8 p.m. Joe then asked her why she didn't ask her boyfriend for help and Sasa replied that she wanted to be independent. Joe also asked if Sasa would need help unloading and moving her things when they arrived, but Sasa again refused. They didn't talk much after that. Joe didn't use navigation and chose a route he thought would be faster, while Sasa was messaging in a work WeChat group. Soon after, Sasa noticed that Joe's route was different from the one on her navigation and commented that he was off course. Joe heard her but didn't respond. A short time later, Sasa mentioned that he was off course again, 
To which Joe replied that if she took that route, she would still get there, and he wouldn't charge her extra for it, all for the sake of five bucks. Zoe later admitted that he sounded a bit harsh when he said those things. Sasa replied with a quick, sorry, and then looked down at her phone. A little later, the van turned onto Kuan Road, a dimly lit street with few pedestrians. After driving about 50 meters, Sasa mentioned being off course for the third time, and Joe drove on without saying anything. A minute later, Sasa mentioned being off course for the fourth time. When she got no response, she leaned out of the window and seemed to say something about stopping the car. But Joe didn't hear clearly. He turned on the hazard lights and was about to slam on the brakes. But in that split second, Sasa jumped out of the window. The whole sequence from her leaning out to her jumping out took only a few seconds. The van was traveling at 33 kilometers per hour at the time. Joe immediately stopped the car and checked on Sasa, who was lying on the road about a meter away from the van. Her head had hit the side of the road and she was bleeding. Her feet were facing the middle of the road. Joe immediately called for an ambulance. It was 9.30 p.m. A few minutes later, the ambulance driver called back. Joe asked, should I call the police? And the ambulance driver said, you should call the police. Joe then dialed 110. Sasa was then taken to the hospital for treatment. And Joe was taken in for questioning by the police and detained for 48 hours. Four days later, on February 10th, Sasa died from severe head injuries. Joe was again detained. The incident was widely reported in the media and attracted a lot of attention online, especially the harsh judgment and insults directed at the driver, Joe. People were quick to assume that the driver had bad intentions toward the passenger, causing her to jump out of the van and subsequently die, even before the police investigation report was released. This was reminiscent of several high-profile criminal cases involving Didi, which is China's version of Uber. In May 2018, a 21-year-old flight attendant, Miss Li, was raped and murdered after being taken to a remote area by a Didi driver in the city of Zhengzhou, Henan province. Then, in August 2018, a 20-year-old woman, Miss Zhao, was also taken to a remote area by a Didi driver in Leqing, Zhejiang province. After demanding over $1,000 in payment, the driver assaulted and killed Miss Zhao. On March 3, 2021, the Changsha Public Security Bureau released a report on the Huolala case. The victim, Sasa, is 23 years old, 150 centimeters tall, and weighs 43 kilograms. The suspect, Zhou, is 38 years old and became a driver for Huolala in 2019. His van had traveled only 19,000 kilometers. There were no audio or video recordings in the vehicle at the time of the incident. Investigations revealed no signs of a struggle, and no DNA belonging to driver Joe was found on Sasa's body or clothing. Police conducted a simulated fall experiment and concluded that Sasa's fall matched Joe's description. Initially, Huolala did not handle the incident properly making it difficult for the victim's family to accept. It wasn't until February 24 that Holala issued an apology and announced reforms, taking responsibility for the incident and compensating Sasa's family. In response, the Holala app introduced real-time recording and a one-click emergency alert feature. The case has sparked considerable controversy, with everyone debating whose fault it really is and why Sasa decided to jump from the van. Someone claiming to be Sasa's supervisor said that Sasa was a hardworking and kind person who never got into fights with anyone. She also had a sweet dog. It was mentioned that she had moved several times within a year, but she had said she wouldn't move again after the last time because she planned to buy her apartment. Sasa had been working for the company for over a year, mostly in recruitment, earning about $3,000 a month but spending only $300, saving the rest for buying an apartment. Many netizens found it hard to believe that Sasa could earn $3,000 a month in Changsha, given that she had only been working in the city for a year. It turned out 
that her job involved recruiting and training female live streamers for a network chat company, where customers chat with live streamers through an app and give them virtual gifts and tips. It's speculated that Sasa may have also chatted with clients and received gifts herself. Her involvement in this type of work may have upset some of the men, and she may have feared retaliation, which could explain why she moved at night and chose to jump from the van instead of calling the police. During the short ride, Sasa's emotions went from relaxed to tense, then suddenly out of control. Within minutes, she was imagining horrific scenarios and believing that the driver might harm her. These are just speculations by people online and have not been confirmed. Sasa's family has refused to release any information and has declined media interviews. The route taken by the driver, Zhou, was a big point of contention. Sasa's uncle said that Zhou chose a very isolated and dark route. But when many people and reporters went to check, they found that the road had many street lights, was wide, and was surrounded by logistics parks and factories on both sides. Also had a police station hundreds of meters away. It wasn't a dark, narrow road, and the street lights were evenly spaced. Joe said he chose this route because he knew it well. It was faster, and his wife's workplace was in a nearby factory. The police later confirmed that the navigation route on the Hulala app was 11 kilometers long, with 15 traffic lights, taking about 21 minutes to drive, while Joe's route was 11.5 kilometers long, with 11 traffic lights, saving about four minutes. Chu explained that Hulala's service is for deliveries that are prepaid, not based on distance. The platform also doesn't require drivers to strictly follow Hulala's navigation, so the claim of off-route driving is inaccurate. On September 10, 2021, the Changsha court heard the case in public and found Zhou guilty of causing death through negligence. He was sentenced to one year in prison with one year's probation. The court found that Zhou became upset because he had to wait a long time for Sasa to load her items and was twice refused payment for extra handling. His mistakes included failing to remind Sasa to fasten her seatbelt, ignoring Sasa's objections to taking an alternate route, which caused her anxiety, and failing to take immediate action when he saw Sasa leaning out of the window, causing her to fall to her death from the van. A month later, Joe and his wife reenacted the scene of the incident and discovered that it would be difficult to fall out of the van window without using force with the feet suggesting that Sasa may have jumped out of the car voluntarily. They believe that in this situation, the driver couldn't have foreseen or prevented it and couldn't have reacted quickly enough. Therefore, they argued that it shouldn't be considered as causing death by negligence. Additionally, Joe obtained a psychological assessment report for Sasa from a lawyer, which indicated that Sasa had an unstable mental state. As a result, Joe appealed the original verdict hoping to be found innocent. On January 7, 2022, the Changsha Intermediate People's Court rejected the appeal without holding a hearing. Zhou's life has changed dramatically. He doesn't drive for a living anymore and works as a cook in a friend's restaurant. His child has been bullied at school, which has caused him great distress. In 2023, a TV show called The Bottom Line aired based on real crime cases, including the incident with the girl jumping out of the van. The show portrayed the driver as verbally abusing the girl, looking for ways to cause someone's death without being noticed, and the driver's family bribing the judge, none of which happened in real life. As a result, Joe issued a statement saying that the show unfairly portrayed him and his family and demanded that it be stopped immediately. Joe believes he is not a criminal and should not have a criminal record. He wants justice and has decided to continue his appeal. He revealed that during the first trial, law enforcement officials tried to prevent his wife from hiring a lawyer for him and instead appointed two legal aid lawyers. His wife's requests to dismiss the legal aid lawyers were ignored. He did not receive a proper defense. The court also refused to hold a hearing during the second appeal. In September 2023, 
Zhou's appeal was again denied. This case has generated a lot of discussion online, with people taking two different sides. From the driver's point of view, they feel that the passenger was taking too long, and they were just trying to take a faster route to save time. They also mentioned that Hulala drivers don't make much money just driving, and that their main income comes from helping with loading and unloading for some extra hard-earned cash. Each trip is like opening a mystery box, and meeting generous customers means they can earn a little more. In the case of this particular order, it took over an hour from pickup to drop-off, and after deducting the platform fees, Chu estimated that he would only make $5. Naturally, he was not satisfied. From Sasa's perspective, she works hard for her money and is saving to buy a house. She was nervous and alert when driving alone at night and probably only expected to be injured if she jumped out of the van and not to lose her life. In 2017, in Zhejiang province, a female passenger in a Didi ride hailing car felt dizzy and suspected that the driver had drugged her. She then suddenly opened the car door and jumped out after the car had driven more than 500 meters. Fortunately, she wasn't injured. A police inspection revealed no drugs or illegal substances in the car. In January 2019, a female college student in Jilin province also suspected that the driver had drugged her. She then brandished a self-defense knife and told the driver to stop the car. In the ensuing struggle, she accidentally cut the driver's neck, prompting the driver to call the police. As a result of these incidents, some drivers have posted a note on the passenger side that reads, When I look in the right mirror, I'm not looking at you. Please understand. Thank you for your cooperation. The Canadian model Diana from the previous case and Sasa are both 23 years old, with a boyfriend of five years. Their independent lives are just beginning. One was too relaxed, the other too uptight, leading to their respective tragedies. In China, many people still don't have the habit of wearing seatbelts in cars. The mandatory seatbelt law was introduced in 2004, and many drivers buckle up to avoid fines and demerits, but the law doesn't apply to other passengers. If Sasa had been wearing a seatbelt, she might not have been able to jump out so easily. And even if she had, Joe might have noticed and stopped her. But these are all ifs. What do you think about this case? If this happened in your country, would the driver be punished? Please share your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel.